Okay, to get started with talking to QBO, you're going to need a couple things. One is this account at developer.intuit account. you got to make a new account there. I've already signed into mine. And you need to have a QuickBooks Online account. Either it's your own personal one, your business, or you can get a developer one by in emailing into it, and I'll have the email address that you email here on the screen. But those are the two things you're going to need to yourself go through the tutorial. I have those things set up so you can just watch. But let's get started making uh, with this process. And we want to go to My Apps. Once we log in, we go to My Apps, create a new app. I'm going to QuickBooks API. I'm going to name the app Minimal Casts. And let's also call it minimal cast.io. We need to put a real domain name in there. Same same for this here, the app URL minimal cast.io. And okay, let's just do com here. It still doesn't like that. Okay, I see. I gotta do uh, HTTP. Here we go. Also, let me save that. I'm gonna call this disconnect. Okay, so then we'll just call this users for the manage users URL. And we'll call this open ID. We're not gonna deal with open ID in these screencasts but you need to put something there. For data source, just say all accounting. We're going to save this. Okay. Let's scroll up here. Okay, here we have our app tokens and keys. Now let's just keep this page open as we go over to the command line. Let's make a new directory. I, I like to use www.labs and start a new Rails app. Rails new minimal casts. Okay, it's going to take a little time for the bundle install and I'm going to come right back. Okay, our Rails new installed just fine. Now I'm going to hook this, I'm using Mac, and I'm going to hook this up to PAL for my development environment. So, got to make a symbolic link to the new Okay, I'm going to test it too, make sure that symbolic link went okay. And it should be minimal casts cast.dev And let's see if we get that Welcome page. Okay, we did. So that's PAL's working just fine. Now let's install to talk to uh, Intuit QuickBooks. We use OAuth, so we need to start there. Let's go to their gem file. And uh, whoops, what's going on here? Oh, I haven't. Uh, CD in a minimal cast. Here we go. Okay, and we can just put this right here. So we're going to need the QuickBooks Ruby gem. I'm helping to contribute with this gem. It's the gem that talks to the version 3 of the QBO API. Let's get the OAuth. Plugin install two, and we want to bundle it up. Okay, that's going to take just a little bit of time, and again, I'll return in a bit. Okay, the bundle install went fine. Let's make some scaffolding. So Rails generate scaffold. We're just going to make a vendor 
scaffolding and make a vendor we're going to be then making a vendor in quickbooks online and let's just give it a name attribute we're going to add one another one later but let's do that right now let's add those migrations also good now we're going to need to do go back to the OAuth so we need to go into the initializer make initializer config initializers let's make an initializer called quick books dot rb I'm going to cut and paste some code here go back to our developer page okay so let's cut and paste these in here go back let me grab the secret save that let's take a quick look here this is just defining a global va variable here and we're making our OAuth connection this is standard stuff here that you're going to need for Intuit for an OAuth connection and let's save this oops there's no file name here okay let me grab all this go back I don't think I opened this correctly Oh, there we go. Okay, let's paste that in. Okay, that makes a little more sense why there was no color coding. And let's also... I need to go to config, routes. Alright. And I'm going to cut and paste the code to save time. But we're going to piggyback off of the vendor's scaffolding we made. Now normally in a production app uh, well, let me explain first. We added, we're adding routes to authenticate and the OAuth, OAuth callback. These would be in different uh, controllers when you had a real app, but to keep things simple. I'm just going to put everything under the vendors and we're going to do a lot of work in vendors index. That's why I'm going to make the root uh, to vendors index. So when we go to minimal casts, slash we're going to go right to the vendors index page and let me save that file that's a lot of code and we haven't even gone to the web page yet let's I'm just going to delete that also going to issue a touch temp restart dot text file and that's just going to make sure we restart pow Open a new tab. Let's go to minimalcast.dev to check this out. Uh, and we do have a problem. Not surprised, no, my, knowing myself. Um, let's see, got a. Okay, we don't have an end statement in RB. In routes.rb. Let's see. Okay, we need a do right there. Okay, let's issue a touch again. Let's reload. Okay, it looks like we're gonna come up with that vendor's index. There, there we go. All right, we gotta keep moving. There's plenty more to do here now. Next step is to add these routes. Let's add these to these actions to the controller. So let's open up the vendors controller and let me go down here to the bottom after the destroy. Okay, we're going to paste this code again and save time. So here are the two actions. Authenticate is going to first. We're going to get this callback URL that we made in the routes. Here's the global variable we sent for OAuth consumer. It's going to make a get request token. That's going to then point to the callback. 
which is this action right here we made. We're going to be using sessions in a real real world app. You're going to want to persist this to the database. When you first make that authentication, it redirects over to Intuit, the proper spot at Intuit. Here in the OAuth, OAuth callback, we're now received the information and we're doing some more session setting of these secrets, these tokens we receive back. And then finally, we're going to redirect back to our root URL saying that your QuickBooks account has been successfully linked. Let's also save that. Now we have to do some view code to get this connect to Intuit button to show up. I'm going to put this view code in application in the layout application HTML layout and let's cut and paste here. I've got to get rid of the yield down here too. I have a yield and cut and pasted code. So let me save. Here is the connect to Intuit button. It comes from Intuit and it is based off of the script we're going to add here. That's how it knows to make the button. It's, just, it's basically like its own directive, its own HTML. And unless the session token is set, we're going to show it. Here's some just styling for the, the notice, flash notice that's going to come back. And in the uh, setup, this is all boilerplate code that comes from Intuit. We do do some customization down here where we add the authenticate vendors URL that we made in the routes. So now we're ready to actually make the connection. And I'm just going to do a touch temp, TMP restart, make sure Again, POW has restarted everything successfully. Let's restart again by reloading the page. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time. There we have our Connect to QuickBooks button. Okay, it's starting up a new tab here. We're making the connection over to Intuit. Okay, now you see here um, it's got my name here already set up and it's asking to authorize. That is because I have the same credentials as my developer account as I do for my QuickBooks online test account. Now normally if you don't have them the same you would see a sign in page here. And if I click not you that's what we would get. But I'm going to skip that. So you're going to get the sign in page then you'll get this authorized page uh, asking you to make this connection. So let's do that. Let's click Authorize. And it's fantastic. Okay, great. We made a successful link, a successful connection via OAuth to, uh, from our Rails app to our QuickBooks Online target. But we should really verify that that connection was successfully made. Let's just close down this tab because I made up a new tab. Uh, let's go to QBO. I'm going to go to my QBO account, QuickBooks Online, and I want to sign in there. You can see my credentials are the same. That's why it's loading in my information automatically. Oops, okay. We need to allow pop-ups. And let me re reload the page. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time. This is my free trial account that they gave me. Okay, let's go to company, tab, activity log, and we can see here, I am successfully signed in. So fantastic. Let me, let me add this also um, you can see here there's another sign in here and that's because I made a mistake in the screencast and I had to do a reconnection and if you do have a problem making that connection you get a 500 error maybe there's some error uh, some, there's an error in your rails code there in that controller and the OAuth callback and then you get a 500 and what you can do is reload this page here which is your developer account and 
you're going to get this disconnect. You can hit this disconnect all button. That will clear your connections. Because other than that, you'll get a token rejection error if you try to connect again and you're already connected. You can go back to the Rails app here in the index, do a reset session, save. I'm going to save the file. I go back here, reload this page. That'll clear the sessions out. That'll give you the connect button back. And you can do another connection. You can redo as many connections as you want here. And that's again, if you get in that token rejected error, that's the things you need to do. Now stay tuned. In the second part two, we're going to make a vendor in the Rails app and have it sync over to our QBO account. So please join me for that one, which will be up shortly. Thank you.